Welcome everyone to JMC Live. We are coming to you on TikTok. We're coming to you on Facebook. We're coming to you on YouTube. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And we're even now on Snapchat. So how exciting is this, huh, Miranda? That we are in all these places simultaneously, you know, spreading the gospel, talking about what Jesus is doing, moving the places where God wants us to go. And tonight we have a special, hold our item for the camera. We have a special guest. How many of you had an Etch-A-Sketch when you were a kid? My friends had one. We had one I in had school. One. Miranda's the lucky <laughs> lucky turkey over here. She She's like, I have an Etch-A-Sketch. I didn't have one. I had one. So I had to like do this stuff, you know, in school or a friend had it or whatever. I didn't actually have one. So I couldn't, you know, do do that. So anyway, um, but I think this is an awesome opportunity tonight to talk about forgiveness. And as I was saying to our TikTok viewers earlier, yeah, we did another show about forgiveness being, you know, the F word. It's taboo. Miranda, you want to tell the difference about this version of Etch-A-Sketch versus what we've done in the past? So this sermon uh, actually started from a Bible study I was reading a few weeks ago <clears throat> entitled Etch-A-Sketch Forgiveness. And they took... Um, the scripture from Psalms uh, 103, talking about where God, when he forgives our sins, he casts it as far as the east is from the west. And how, what does that actually look like in a modern kind of idea? And really, what it looks like is this. When you have an Etch-A-Sketch, you can draw these lines and stuff. The lines represent sin. But when we come to the realization we need a savior and we need forgiveness and we cry out to God and repent of our sins and turn from the, the old life that we were living and we ask him to come in our heart, he takes the etch a sketch and he just shakes it like that and it's clean. And that's what the sermon really is about, explaining what that looks like um, and what God and and the different um, and also giving examples in the New Testament, not just the Old Testament. The New Testament, when Jesus forgave um, specifically two people, we're going to talk about. So let's focus first on the main scripture that is our theme for tonight, and it's Psalms one hundred three, verses seven through thirteen. It says, "He made known his ways to Moses." His acts to the children of Israel. Now, what does it mean? His ways it mean what? You know, the laws, the you know rules, like the the plan for their lives, kind of his way. You know, when we when we come to Christ, we come to God, and we turn from ways. We are surrendering our lives to His plan and His ways. And in the Old Testament, this was. <clears throat> what they're referring to as we talk about in the new testament under um when we have when um we plead the blood of jesus for forgiveness of our sins and so he says the lord is merciful and gracious slow to anger and abounding in mercy he will not always strive with us nor will he keep his anger forever he has not dealt with us according to our sins now that is so important because um, our sins, if we would, if you think about it, if we were dealt with according to our sins, we would just be, you know, just destroyed immediately. Um, but he does not, nor does he uh, punish us according to our iniquities. So when we look at that in a worldly view, we, you know, when somebody commits a, you know, a, um, a crime or <clears throat> something horrific like murdering people, we we have laws and we have um, rules and we have um, court systems. We put these people through to judge them, and so that's what they're talking about in in God, how God judges us, 
and how he deals with us when, when we look at the crimes that we've committed and the sins we have committed. And, and in an earthly realm, we see the courts either a lot, you know, they serve a maximum sentence of like life without parole. They're in prison for the rest of their life. Or sometimes the death penalty, they are put to death. But God himself says he has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. Because if he did, we would all we would not be here, and we would all be damned to hell. <clears throat> For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward and that, and the second time you see in the scripture the same first is merciful, and then his mercy towards those who fear him. Now that's important because when we realize when we realize we are sinners, when we realize we are damned to hell if we don't change, if we don't um, come to to Christ and, and to the Lord and ask forgiveness and turn from our ways and walk in His ways and walk in His plan for our life. <clears throat> it doesn't matter how old or how young you are when you come to that realization and you have that fear comes in you because no matter... And you'll understand why I'm saying this now in just a minute. Because no matter if you're at the beginning of your life or at the end of your life, when you come to the realization you are a sinner and you are lost, you are filled with fear. And so that, what does he mean by he is merciful towards those who fear him and are repentant? And he's, he says, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions, our sins, our iniquities from us. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. And that we can also reference the parable that Jesus shared about the prodigal son. It says he pities his child. He he uh, and he and the Lord pities those who fear him. That's exactly what happened at the end of the of the prodigal son parable. The son came home. He was fearful. He was repentant, and he you know. He was like, I'm sorry. And the father had pity on him and took him in <clears throat> and, and loved on his son and hugged his neck and said, I'm, I'm so happy you came home. And that also, um, just like I said, the Old Testament and New Testament mirror, you know, they, they truly mirror each other if you know where to look. And so with that, um, let us move on to. John, we're you know, we're, Jeremy, do you want to share anything real quick before I move on? Not yet. Okay. Well, so so this is the this is the etch a sketch forgiveness moment. For you know, when we come, when we when we are fearful, we know we need we know we need a savior. We know we are um we need a change in our life. We need to come to the Lord and we ask for forgiveness. This is our etch a sketch forgiveness moment. He cleans the slate. He scatters our sins and our iniquities and our transgressions as far as the east is from the west. And it looks like this it's a blank slate. It's a blank slate. <coughs> and in the in the New Testament, in John chapter 8, starting at verse. Uh, two. It says, Now early in the morning, he came again to the, Jesus. He came again to the temple, and all the people came to him, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Now, Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? Now, rem that kind of remember in Psalm, it said that the Lord spoke to Moses and told him that, you know, the, the, the Psalm that we read <coughs> about the laws and his ways. And uh, this was, this was separate from the, you know, the, the, the laws that how to judge and everything like that. Um, as humans, the you whom you know passing judgment and things like that. So he says, they said this. They said testing him that they might have something on which to accuse him.
But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground, and I still to this day want to know what he wrote on the ground, okay? I, I, that's something always stuck no, in no, my here's head. here's where I wanted to pause. <laughs> okay, okay. You put us both on the screen okay. for this. this. This is where I wanted to pause for we both have a conversation about this. Okay. And this is not in the Bible. We're just discussing what would what would possibly we, well, if we had to be Jesus in this moment, what would we write on the ground? Now, for me, I would think from a military standpoint or a law enforcement standpoint, you would know who all these individuals were before oh. you ever got there. Yeah, he knew and who I would they think, were. And I would think they didn't know who he personally was. Mm-hmm. But here's what I think he wrote down. He wrote down their full name. He wrote down their age. He wrote down where they lived. He wrote down their address. I And also- then, no, then... Not only that, because they would probably say, well, someone probably told them that. Then start writing down three things for each of these individuals that nobody else would know that happened many, many years ago or this personally happening right now. And some of those things written on the ground were sins that would have caused them to be stoned as well. (laughs) That's what I think he wrote. I think he was writing all their sins down that that they should be judged for and possibly stoned to death for. Because if you notice, now let's go back. I said, so, so when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, he who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Okay. So he's continuing to write. And we don't know, but, like I said, that's speculation. But I, I've i always thought he was writing their sins on the ground in front of them. Then then Rose, who, who heard it, being convicted by their conscience, went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even to the last. And Jesus was left alone. <laughs> so they clearly could see what he's writing on the ground. And when he asked the question... When he posed the question, well, those who have not sinned throw the first stone. Who's, you know, but between the, what he wrote on the ground and what he asked, that, they, they left. All of them left. And the woman standing in the, left, and Jesus and the woman was left standing in the midst. When Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, woman, and this gets me, I just praise the Lord. Where are your accusers of where are you, those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. And this is important. He said, Go and sin no yeah. more. Mm-hmm. It wasn't telling her, Well, I sin I, I forgive you for the for this adultery, but you can go back and you know do it again. I'll just keep forgiving you. No, he said, Go and sin no more. And so much in today's society, we think, oh, we oh well, you know, I I mess you know, I messed up big time, but you know, I you know, I can just go back and ask forgiveness again. That's not how it works. He specifically told her, Don't go back into that. You go, you go from here, you, you know, you are forgiven, you know, and go and sin no more. Jesus then spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. And that is so important. We for, so How many times have you heard secular people talking? <clears throat> he said, well, he forgave her sin. You know, he, you know, he, you know, he was just a good man. No. He said, after he said, I don't condemn you, go and sin no more. And he's he speaking to everyone, not just the woman. I am the light of the world. Follow me and you will not walk in darkness, but you will have life. Light of life. So he was telling her, follow me. You know, he didn't just say, go and sin no more. No, he told her, this is who I am. And this is the way to go. Okay. He didn't just not prepare people, you know, just to go back out, you know. But how many times have we heard the world bring this up and and say, well, you know, you know, he'll, he'll forgive us, you know, just like he did. But he, he told her to go and sin no more. He didn't say go back into doing, you know, your porn addiction or your, 
you know, whatever addiction you've got or whatever sin. Well, I mean, it's, in this case, it was a sexual sin. So he didn't say, okay, go have that affair. Go live with that boyfriend. You know, go go cheat on your husband. I'll forgive you. Every time you do it, I'll just forgive you. No, he said, go and go no more. Change your ways. Follow me. I am the light of the world. Do not walk in darkness. You, if you follow me, you will not walk in darkness. You will walk in the light of life. <clears throat> and that's, that's the meat and potatoes we've got to be speaking to people today. But don't be them taters, though. Don't be the taters. Don't be a dictator or an agitator or an amputator. That's a whole other thing that we've, <laughs> we, uh, we heard uh, before we went live. But, Jeremy, um, you know, we ourselves struggle mm -hmm. with temptations just because we sit here and we share with you, oh, yes, we have, <clears throat> we have weaknesses. We have temptations. We, we have um, major struggles. And as of right now, I am actually in very serious therapy because we've had multiple um, threats on my life. People coming to our house we don't even know, um, threatening to physically harm me specifically. Um, and uh, the most recent has been going on for two weeks. Every Friday and Saturday for two weeks. Got so bad I had to call the cops last Friday. So... Mentally, I'm shot because this a person we don't even know who this is. We've never had, never spoken to this person, but they are literally standing up against our house, bringing a dog to pee on our our patio furniture out back, and they are getting behind the bushes up against our house, touching our bay window like they're trying to look in our windows. And uh, thankfully, our security cameras caught all of this, and we showed the police. And the management over our neighborhood is has taken extremely serious, and hopefully it is now stopped, and they are moving forward. But what I'm saying is, it is so it is tempting to just shut out the world because, and just stop wanting to be around people because, you know, of things that have happened. But to not walk in the calling that God has for my life is a sin in itself because I'm turning from him. And if I don't continue on and I don't, you know, yeah, I have problems, but we're dealing with them. I have, you know, yes, I have panic attacks. I have night terrors and things. Um, but if I allow this to destroy my me, that's a sin. That's sinning because that's turning away from God and not walking in the purpose and the plan and his ways that he has for my life. And I've been through way worse than just some guy stalking my house um, multiple times over the past six months. Um, and long before, I mean, I've been through um, multiple death threats, actually had to get restraining orders and all that stuff back as far as when I was uh, in my late teens. But I didn't allow it to stop me. And, and that's basically what I'm saying now to Christians who are struggling. <coughs> we will have struggles. The Bible doesn't say it's soon when you become a Christian, all your you know worries are actually they will increase because now the devil marks you as an enemy, you know, and he's gonna be after you. But don't that's why there's so many scriptures that says fear not. There are so many scriptures in the Old and New Testament says fear not. And and um, scriptures how to walk through um, hard times, especially the Psalms. Psalm, I, I'm, when I'm hard, having a, going through a hard time, I read the Psalms. And so <coughs> this is where I want um, the final part. Jeremy, do you have anything to share before I, I go on? So, for your personal lives today, what do you feel is tugging on your heart that you haven't forgiven somebody, or they haven't forgiven you, or what is it that you need to ask God to forgive you for? Mm -hmm. Because the purpose of tonight's program 
is for you to understand, hold the sketch up, and then bring it in front of the camera in my hand. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, you can put that on screen. You gotta hold it in your hand, So, and then you can turn to face my camera in my hand. What What is it that you need a clean slate from? Now, most jobs you have, you have a performance review, and you start a new year, and you have a clean slate. When you go to school and you start a new year and you're a kid in school, you start with a clean slate. Now, there's things like speeding tickets that drop off after seven or ten years and things like that. But we're getting more deeper into this. Wanting to know what do you need that only Jesus can forgive? What do you need that only God can help you with? What do you need that only Jesus Christ himself is going to be able to transform your life from the inside out? So you're not the same as you once were. You're not the same person. You're not the same person anymore. Yeah. And they, and yeah, you're the same name. And when you sweat, you still might stink the same way. You know, you might wear the same clothes. You might have the same accent. We're not talking about that. We're specifically talking about what is God going to do in your life today? Well, right where the, you are at, that only He can transform. The, the thing, so that when people see you later in life, when you have a true God moment in your life, people will notice something different about who you are. The other thing. A lot of people focus so much on the outward appearance, mm -hmm. um, like, well, you don't look like a Christian, or you know, or, or um, you. Uh, a lot of people quote, I call them church people. Yeah, they judge sinners by the way they look and they act. Well, of you know, well, of course, and they treat them like, well, you're not allowed to come into my church, and first you get yourself all. You get yourself looking right and sounding right before you come in and get saved. No. Did Jesus tell the woman, well, you got to do this and this before I'll, you know, for, well, you don't look the way, you know, no. you're supposed to. No. And you're not at, you know, you, you know, you're not specifically doing, you got to, you got to do some things before I'll forgive you. No, he didn't do that. No. He didn't do that. And this is where, this is where we go to our next part and our final part. The thief on the cross, Luke 23, verses 39 through 43. It says, and while Jesus was on the cross, then one of the criminals who were hanged uh, blasphemed, blasphemed him, saying, if you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, do you not even fear God? Seeing you are under the same condemnation, and we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. Now, there's a lot of people that <coughs> like to... That I, I've seen a lot of people say, well, the thief, and I've seen this post on Facebook, and maybe some of you have. Well, the thief only did that out of fear. And this is where I go back to Psalm 103. It says, the, those who fear him. Yeah. So, well, he was about to die. Yeah. But he was dying and realized he real like he saw Jesus for who he was and he recognized Jesus for that he was God and that he needed a savior and he needed to be forgiven and he was repentant and he was fearful. It doesn't matter if you're at the beginning of your life or at the end of your life. God doesn't see it like we on earth see it. He sees a person who is crying out repenting and fearful of their sins, knowing they are condemned to hell and damned they, because of their actions. And they have nothing to save themselves but to cry out. We all 
No, if whether we're hanging on a cross, or whether we're just minutes away from dying of cancer, or if we're at an altar of prayer, we're all at the same, all those people mentally are in the same place. I am a sinner. I need a savior. Christ is the savior. And I don't, and I want to live for him. And I want to be with him in heaven when I die. Doesn't matter how soon or how much later. We're all that thief on the cross. Now, here's the other thing. <clears throat> Talking about, you know, well, you need to do this and you need to do that before you'll get into heaven, blah, blah, blah. The thief on the cross kind of just throws all that out of there. Because there's so many people that say, well, you got to have this. You've got to have this happen or this happen or this happen before you're truly saved. Okay, let's go to this little story I found that I've been <clears throat> contemplating for a long time. It says, how does the thief on the cross fit into your theology? No baptism, no communion, no confirmation, no speaking in tongues, no mission trip, no volunteerism, and no church clothes. He couldn't even bend his knees to pray. He didn't say the sinner's prayer as what we call the sinner's prayer, what you're supposed to say. And among other things, he was a thief. He was a criminal. Jesus didn't take away his pain. He didn't heal his body, and he didn't smite the scoffers. Yet it was a thief who talked, who walked into heaven the same hour as Jesus, simply by believing. He had nothing more to offer than his belief that Jesus was who he said he was. No spin from brilliant theologians, no ego or arrogance, no shiny lights, no skinny jeans or crafty words or haze machines or donuts or coffee or entrance, you know, at the entrance, you know, no, uh, um, small, you know, we'll come to my small group or, you know, or the, or, you know, big sound systems and no nothing. Just a naked man dying. On a cross, unable to even fold his hands to pray. Think about that. Think about that. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that so that whoever believed in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. John and you think about right now how many people are sick. 800,000 people die here. Because the poor Norvite. <laughs> And as I made a post earlier this week, how many people have written me on Snapchat, on Instagram, on TikTok, and on Facebook, and they're all like, Jeremy, I'm at the hospital. Jeremy, I'm going to ICU. And then they stop writing me. And it's been months, and some have been years, and I never get a message again. And then I look their name up, and I find out they passed away. Here's the thing. You have to be if ready. If you live long enough... If you live long enough and have the opportunity to get baptized and take communion and 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 do and volunteer and go on mission trips that's great but there are some of us there are people like the thief in this world who don't have that time. No. Does that mean they're not going to get to heaven? No. It it didn't when Jesus said and it, when it says in John 3:16 says whosoever believes in him shall not perish. But have everyone It didn't say you have to. It, it, it said whosoever believes in him and gets baptized and does communion and gets com confirmed and speaks in tongues. It, it doesn't say that. It doesn't say that. But if you live long enough to be able to fully walk and be able to do these things, yeah, you have the opportunity to get. The thief didn't have the opportunity. There are many people who don't have the opportunity. They can't be baptized because of where they live. They live in a restricted country where they're not allowed to do things like that. They're not allowed to do communion. Does that make them lesser Christian, less lesser than us? No. No, it does not. And in fact, a lot of times these people that live in North Korea and 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 uh Indonesia and uh, China and the Middle Eastern countries, they their faith is actually stronger than a lot of people that are able to go to church every single Sunday and sit in a big church because their faith has been tested. Their faith has gone through the fire and been refined. And 
And we in America that have never lived under this kind of dictator, oppressor, you know, instigator, you know, separator, whatever, whatever them tater taters. you want, you uh, whatever tater you want to add to that. You gotta stay away from them. We taters. don't understand. We've a lot of us now. Some of us here in America have gone through things like me and Jeremy, and we have survived things that we have gone through persecution. We have gone through abuse, and we've gone through um, nearly losing our lives. Um, here in America, mm -hmm. and um, me myself, I've been a, I have been actually um, somebody actually threatened to come to church and shoot me while I was playing my drums in the middle of a church service when I was sixteen years old. This is America, Southern Ohio, Appalachian country. It happens. It absolutely happens. We see it happening more and more. <coughs> With people going in and holding people hostage like they just did in Texas um, at the synagogue. Um, what was it, last week? We we see you know, um, church shootings on the rise. This is what people in restricted countries deal with on a daily basis. They know physically going to church, this could be their last time, but they go anyway. Because they are... They want to walk in the light. They don't want to walk in the darkness, as Jesus told the woman who was committed, uh, who was uh, um, accused of adultery. Follow me. I am the light of the world. <clears throat> and they follow him at all costs. But let us not discredit those who may not have walked. Nobody is going to have the same, run the same race as you, walk the same path as you. Their path is going to be a little bit different, but it all leads to Christ. Because, you know, not all of us are called to go overseas and be a missionary. Not all of us are called to, you know, stay here in America. Not all of us are called to be musicians. Not all of us are called to be preachers. We all have different gifts and we all have different abilities that God uses now, these, they, those are us who are not at the end of our life that have come to realize we need a Savior. And we have a chance to go on. I truly believe that the thief on the cross, if he had not died on the cross, and he would have lived on, he would have been one of the greatest missionaries to share in the gospel and what Jesus did for him. <coughs> not... Because he witnessed Jesus give himself for us. He watched him hang on the cross. Watched him give his life for us. Jesus paid a debt that we could pay. Mm -hmm. We could not do what Jesus did. That's why he had to come. We were all damned. We were all headed for hell. If he did not come. But because he did. The thief went to heaven. The woman committed was accused of adultery. She went and said no more, and walked in the light that G of Jesus. The way I go back to the song that we played at the beginning. I've been there too, and I truly that song is a is a testimony of what I have been through <coughs> because. That song, I've been listening to that song since I was five years old. Um, the man that recorded that song is no longer with us. He passed away in October 2020 of COVID. But he was a good friend of my family's, and I he inspired me. He was one of the people that inspired me to be a musician and wanted to play music for Jesus. So anyway, what? So anyway, when when you hear the first line said they sit alone with eyes that roam out the windows of the place that they call home. Now when I was five I didn't understand that. But over the years I have lived that. 
I may not be old. I may not have gray hair. But because of the Crohn's disease, there's been time, there was two straight years I couldn't leave my house. I was a prisoner in my own home, and the only thing I could do was look out the windows of my home and pray, God, please, you know, I'm a prisoner in this body and these four walls, you know, I'm just, you know, I can't go out and play my music. I can't do what you've called me to do. Help me. <clears throat> and for two years, I, I literally couldn't go anywhere, couldn't go to church, couldn't do anything because I was so ill. And so I've lived that and then when we get to the part where the you know and with dirty jeans and and uh playful screams they cry late at night with hopeful dreams the mother will finally see daddy on bed and need to come home i was that little kid because my parents did get divorced and my dad didn't come home and my mom you know was a single mom um raising us until I became an adult and, you know, got on my own. And it was hard. And, um, but I have been there. I have lived that. I mean, when I sing that song, it is, it is honest truth. I really have lived all of that. And I understand. And that's why I, I want so much to tell people about Jesus because that's where he brought me from. These are the things he brought me out of and I'm still here and I'm still fighting and I'm still playing my music. Yeah, I still don't get to go out and play like I used to, but I, I am getting out and we're getting to go out and actually physically go out and uh, perform and, <clears throat> and preach and share. But this is still the online ministry is still so important because so many can't get out and we understand how hard it is because when we couldn't get out, that's what how we got fed was churches streaming their services online, um, what, reading, uh, listening to podcasts, um, watching um, you know devotional videos. That's how we. I didn't lose my faith because I kept feeding it in whatever possible way I could. And um, there's a lot of bad things being done through the internet, but there's a whole lot of good. And if you don't know Jesus as your personal savior, if you are the thief on the cross, if you are the woman, you know, about to be stoned, if you are those who, you know, um, are crying out, you know, in fear because to him, because you know you have sinned you, and all of your, and crying out for mercy. And you want to change your ways and you want to turn from him. You just pray. Just pray. <clears throat> Cry out and say, Lord Jesus, forgive me. I am a sinner. And even if it, it even if it's just what the thief on the cross said. But you, you don't know what to say. But you just cry, Jesus, help me. Jesus, save me. And you repent, you know, and repent of your sins, a turn from your old life and start to walk in his ways and his purpose that he has for your life. Do it now because time is so short. Because you see what's going on in the world. And every day, it's literally the book of Revelation, the book of Ezekiel, the book of Daniel, the book of Isaiah is literally coming to life. And, and and all the things that Jesus said was going to happen just before his coming is happening. It's just like a it's just like a tidal wave. It just keeps coming and coming and knocking us over. One thing right after we never can get our footing, it seems. We look up some something else is going on. Something else is going crazy. And it's affecting all of us all at once, it seems. It isn't just a particular area of the world. The whole world is being affected by so many of the same things all, all at once. And if we think this world's going to get any better, if we think we can save this world, we're wrong. Because the only person who can save this world is Jesus. doesn't matter how much, you know, we do. 
you know, we say in ourselves, we can do, we can't do anything. We can do little things, but Christ is the one who truly makes a difference and changes people's hearts. All we got to do, all, all we are called, we are called to share the word and share the message, but he has to do the rest. He has to convict them. He has to bring the Holy Spirit down upon them. We can't do that. We can't physically go in and change someone's heart. Only he can do that. But we have to point them in the right direction where to go. So they can get that heart transplant. So, Jerry, I'm going to turn it, let you finish up with your last thoughts, and then you can pray, and then we'll end for the night. Well, as we said at the beginning of this broadcast, this has been seen on Snapchat, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram Live. And there's somebody on each of these platforms that we have followed or has seen our posts throughout the years, or this might be your first time. And you may be like the thief on the cross. You may be somebody who doesn't have a lot of time left in the tank. You could be watching this from a bed in a hospital. You could even watch this and possibly in prison. Because I've been told there have been security guards and prison guards and police officers and sheriffs that have shared our broadcast to some of their inmates. But I hope you aren't the thief on the cross and this isn't your last opportunity this isn't your last ride but as we said throughout this broadcast you have to forgive yourself you need to forgive others for you to have freedom but the ultimate freedom is an etch a sketch forgiveness by Jesus Christ who transforms you from the inside out and you become a new Preacher in Christ, you're born again. And when you start walking down that road, your life is transformed. But again, for those that are the thief on the cross, you watch this broadcast. You say, I believe in you, Jesus. And you go out to go get a milkshake and you get in a car accident. You drive to work, you get in a car accident, you get sick and you die. There's somebody out there like that right now. Whether they're watching the broadcast or not, you can turn on news programs all over the United States and in other countries. Somebody's going to die. It's 748. Somebody's going to die in the next two minutes in every country from something. Don't wait until that two minutes is up to forgive yourself, forgive somebody else, to help somebody. Because I'm telling you now, I'm telling you now, when you have that opportunity to do what God has told you to do, your life is different. Even in that last minute, it's never too late to seek Christ. It's never too late to ask for an itch to sketch forgiveness. Some people say, well, I, I've you know, I've murdered people. I was in the military. I killed people. I tortured people. Um, I was a federal agent. I did this. You know, I was involved in this gang. You know, I raped this person. I was a pedophile. I was a this. I was a that. Christ can forgive you for anything that you've gone through and done. It can transform your life. There may be a penalty for your sin. You might end up being in jail or prison. You might end up, you Yeah, know, but that's the earthly... That's yeah. an earthly kind of thing. Yeah. And we your life can be completely different if you just give God that opportunity. So right now we're going to give you that opportunity. We're going to ask Miranda to start the prayer. I can, you can just pray because I'm crying. So All right. Well, she's crying too much. She's going to pray silently. But if you have a need, you're on Facebook, you're on YouTube, you're on TikTok, you're on Instagram, you're on Snapchat, wherever it is that you see. You're on our podcast. You're on the podcast. 
wherever it is that you hear these messages, from us and many others. It's not too late. It might be too late in the earthly realm. You may never get forgiveness from your parents or your kids or, or you may never get that job again. You may never get that car or that promotion or whatever it is you're looking for. But that's an earthly, humanistic plan for your life that is limited by people and what people do. Our God, Jesus Christ, has plans and capabilities way beyond anything you can imagine that can give you a peace beyond all understanding whether you have something or you don't. I've been homeless. I did ministry while I was homeless. Most people don't do that. I've been beaten. I've been shot at. I've had someone try to set me on fire. I've had people steal stuff, take my school books out of my bag, open the window on the bus, and throw it into a lake out the window. Beat me up where I had over a hundred bruises on my body in the second grade in one day. I've been kicked. I've been peed on. I've been shot at. I've been stabbed. But because your faith was grounded in Christ and not in man, mm -hmm. you were, you didn't, so I didn't cave in. You didn't turn your back on God and blame God. I didn't God. blame God for all this stuff. Just as Job didn't, he, he, you know, his wife, Job's wife said, curse God and die, mm -hmm. you know, because you're worthless, you know. So at this That's, point. But he didn't. At this point, what we're going to do, we're going to pray. Brandon's going to start praying silently as we prepare for this. Like I said, if you have a need, post it on Instagram, post it on Facebook, post it on YouTube, post it here on TikTok, post it on Snapchat. In the podcast, you can contact us, send an email, send a text, sign up for our, you know, newsletter. Our newsletter. Receive some free musical gift songs if you want. But right now, in this moment, anyone who's listening to this broadcast, I want you to start praying for the people that are in your lives. I want you to start praying for the people that used to be in your lives. I want you to start praying for the people that will be in your lives in the future. You are currently in this broadcast, during this prayer, you are becoming a spiritual prayer warrior ditch digger for the people that will ever be in your life. For your entirety of your life. That is the power of Christ. Someone that met you when you were born. And is someone that meets you when you die. You're able to pray for them right now in Jesus name. What are we praying for? We're praying for not only forgiveness. But for freedom that are the things that are in your lives. The peace that goes beyond all understanding. That God will give you a direction and a plan for your life. So that you can do what he's called you to do. To be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ as what he wants you to do. And again, if you need that forgiveness, God is there. Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we come before you right now. We just ask you to wrap your arms around the people that listens to these broadcasts. Whether it's on Snapchat, whether it's on Facebook, if it's on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram Live, Snapchat, podcast in person, wherever else it is, we just ask you, Lord Jesus, to just come right now and wrap your arms around your people. Give them a peace that goes beyond all understanding, but don't give them any peace if they don't have that forgiveness. If they need to forgive someone else, they need to forgive themselves. And more specifically, send the Holy Spirit into their lives so that they will get to this point in their lives where they need to cry out and say, I need a Savior. I need Jesus Christ. I want Christ to transform my life. I want Jesus to help me. I want God to bring me peace. I want God to bring me joy. I want God to forgive me for the mistakes of my life. Whether it's something I said, something I did, something I didn't do, went to the wrong place. There is no sin too small or too great. That God is not capable to come in your life and transform you from the inside and out. God is greater than man. God is greater than the things that happen in our lives. And Jesus Christ wants to set you free. Lord Jesus, we just ask you right now to just help everyone in the midst of this virus that's going on, this coronavirus, virus, these things that are happening. There's people that are wanting to commit suicide. There's people that are wanting to do drugs and alcohol. There's people committing domestic violence. They're wanting to fight. They're angry. They're scared. They're frustrated. They're hungry. They're, they're to the max. Can't do anything no more. 
They're terrified by people stalking them. They're outside their windows or knocking on their doors or showing up at all nights and doing all sorts of crazy things. Lord Jesus, come right now and help guide us in the way that you want us to be. Bring us that place you want us to go. By the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, we pray. Amen and amen. Well, that's it for us tonight, folks. Um, next Saturday, we will have uh, our next JMC live show for this month. And it is a, spe a special interview with who, Jeremy? Who is here? Margo interview? Williams. Her name's Margo Williams. And uh, she's got a great testimony and, uh, and a, a great ministry. And uh, so uh, we'll be returning to our regular time at 8 p.m. Eastern next Saturday. Uh, special JMC Live interview with Margo Williams. Williams. Okay. Sorry. It's an hour and a half interview. <clears throat> um, like I said, it, it'll be at 8 o'clock unless other things change. We have to go earlier. Um but it's an amazing interview. Uh, it's going to catch Miranda a little bit off guard on a few things. But uh, it's something that needs to be heard. We're going to talk about counseling. We're going to talk about ministry. Um, we're going to talk about going through things in people's lives and what God wants to do. And her testimony of Margaret Williams is amazing. All right, folks. We'll see you, we'll see you next Saturday. God bless and good night.